people, I, I, I know I sound like I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm only telling you for your own good. Obey God. Even if you feel that it's rough, that you didn't budget right, and you can't really pay your tithes, listen, don't, 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 don't do that. Obey God. See, I heard Deacon Stanley's testimony, but it was one part in there that they're going to remember that they didn't remember, is that they celebrated. Let's, let's. Wish them a happy anniversary. They celebrated their anniversary last week. <clears throat> Man, they celebrated, celebrated their anniversary last week. Now, while they were on celebration mode, way away from here, enjoying each other, and how many years? Six years. Now, men, listen to this. As men, we are the spiritual priests of our household. And it dawned upon him, he asked his wife, he said, did we pay our tithes? And he worried about tithes or thinking about tithes while they, and they both went into that mode and they took time out of their anniversary celebration to send their tithes. Most people would have said, oh, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. So right after that, notice what he said. You know, and in fact, he was supposed to went to work that Tuesday, but didn't. He told him, I'm going that Wednesday. See, God always have if you just trust God. And see, what people don't understand is that, okay, it takes money to run God's house, the air, the lights, everything. Um... Everything belongs to God. And what God is, is, is really the tithe. Let me tell you what the tithe and the offering do. It really just shows our level of obedience to God's word. In 1 Samuel 15 and 22, he said that uh, God prefer obedience than sacrifice. Now, I'm going to say this. And I can say it easily because if you're angry, it's between you and God. If you rob God, how can he trust you with anything? That's what the Bible calls us, a God robber. And then God says, I want you to prove yourself. Prove me, brother. Test me. If you just give the tithe and the offering, he says, I'll open up the windows of heaven. So most of our struggles is because we refuse to obey God. But what I found out about people is that we spend money wherever we feel that's important to us. Your spiritual well-being should be the most important thing to you. The Bible say that a man's, wherever his treasure is, that's where his heart is. And see, God only acts, but I know one person so Trina, that they won't rob. They ain't gonna rob Uncle Sam, the IRS. And when you owe him, he gonna take it. And he gonna take it slowly. And it looks like, and I've been there, looks like the more he take and you think it should be going down, by that next month, it's even higher because they charge you. See, some y'all ain't never, yet. some y'all ain't never had to pay the government. So listen, only thing I'm telling you all is, is start trusting and obeying God. Because if what you're going to steal, I say this about thieves, if what you're going to steal is not going to make you rich and free, why steal it? We see so many people robbing in broad daylight now and getting caught. It's going to cost you way more. So I just want to encourage you to trust God. Now, I'm not twisting your arm and saying you have to. Keep doing what you're doing. If it's working for you and you happy and you like it, keep doing it. It's just my responsibility as a servant of God is to remind you of God's word. And when you go back to Malachi, a lot of pastors don't like this. 
But when God say, you have robbed me, he was speaking to the priests. Then he said, and this whole nation and the people. So even as leaders, we have to give. There are so many pastors that demand the people to give, but they don't give. You know, and I think every pastor, this is the way I think, this is not the Bible, this is my thought, is that you should lead the way with giving. You should lead the way with giving. And never ask the people to do more. And I told the leaders here, never ask people to do more than what you're willing to do. If you're going to ask them for 100, you ought to be the first one to give the 100 or more. And if your 100 is the only 100 that you get, so be it. You lead by example. But we want to thank you all uh, for your giving. Uh, truly, we have been able to do it. I'm hoping I'm inspiring somebody that's watching leaders, or maybe you congregate somewhere, is to start being faithful to God. That's what it's all about, is obeying God. That's what it's all about. Um, most people think the wrong way. They think they give in the past all their money. No, listen, quit listening to all that, that stuff out there that y'all hear, you know, because if the pastor was getting all the money, then why are the lights still on? You know, it, it takes money to run. Think about your house. It takes money to run your house. It takes money to run God's house. But I can guarantee you, again, obedience is the way. That's in everything, not just in money. In everything, obey God. Amen? Amen. All right. Father, we thank you this morning. May your blessings succeed our obedience to your word. I'm thankful for every individual, not just here, but afar off, that has been obedient to your word this morning. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Are right, you face the inner aisles? Hello, I'm Bishop John W. Baines. First, I want to give all praises and honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Secondly, I want to give you honor, our sponsors and our partners. Again, I want to thank all of you for allowing us to come into your homes. You have been so faithful over the years. We just pray and hope that the word of God has been a blessing to your life. And certainly want you to know that we're always praying for you and hope that you're praying for us. Listen, I want to ask you to partner with us again. If you would sow your seeds, of course, I believe that wherever you worship at, send your tithes and your offering there. Uh, but we're asking you to sow a seed into our ministry to help us to continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. To help those that are hurting, those that are seeking, those that are knocking, those that just need encourage you. So listen, there's three ways that you can do this. You can go to our website, first of all, heartoffaithchurch.com. On the home page at the very bottom, go down and click on the donate button. Or you can go on your smartphone and you can download a cash app. Uh, our cash app name is the dollar sign heart of faith. Again, that's the dollar sign heart of faith. Also, you can download uh, Giveify, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Follow the instructions and then choose Heart of Faith Worship Center as your church to give. We we'll certainly will appreciate it. And parents, why Elder Johnson is coming, I want to encourage the parents, please, I'm begging you, for your sake, start parenting your children. Teaching them right from wrong. I'm grateful to God that the two 12-year-old girls, y'all need to monitor what y'all children is looking at on YouTube, them smartphones. If I had it my way and thought that you would listen to me, I would say take all electronic devices away from your children till they turn 18. Because it's getting them in trouble. They have all of this stuff on, on the sites that you, and let me tell you the signs. When your child start running and hiding in rooms or secret places <clears throat> to build them smart devices, 
wake up parents that mean they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing they have these challenges out there that with some statue that a Japanese or Chinese guy made somebody took the picture and put it out there called Momo challenging children and is showing up on a children's site to do harm to themselves, to cut their wrists, commit suicide. And then they're meeting people. So the devil is using what you're using to parent your child. The devil is using that to destroy them. I'm just thankful to God. My heart was, was rejoiceful with those two 12 year old girls made it back home. They, they, they got in contact and did a challenge to disappear for 48 hours, 12 years old. And they ended up at a guy house not that far from them. And he raped one of them and he turned them loose. Just lucky they, they live. Blessed by God, they live. They, they, was, they are alive today. So parents, look, be cautious of what you letting your child, you should be in your child's life to watch. I don't care how much they say you hating, you wanna freely be in their life because if not, I guarantee you, I'm gonna be in this black suit or black suit and we're gonna be preaching their funeral and you're gonna be crying, your family gonna be crying. There's nothing you could do and I may just put out a sermon, this is the result of bad parenting. Start raising your children. Quit trying to be your children's friend. And if you notice the change in your child, it's because you are putting them more in the world than you are with Christ. That's the Bible. Let me remind you, the Bible say, evil communication corrupt good manners. That's why you have two, three, four, five-year-olds cussing like they 40 and 50 years old and parents think it's funny. You know, it, I'm telling you now, y'all listen, the Holy Spirit is speaking this morning. You can laugh today, but tomorrow you'll be crying. Because tomorrow, you'll be the person they're cussing. So, listen, it's getting more and more wicked in this world. The Bible already said all of that. We have a responsibility. God will judge us how we parenting our children because God put us in place to raise them in him. We can't put it off on YouTube and, and all these, these channels and everything. And I'll say it and I'll say it again. When your children at two years old can sing and dance to Beyonce's song and know every word in her song, it's because it's a reflection on you as a bad parent. You let them listen more to Beyonce than you let them listen to the word of God. And if you don't want to read to them, you can hit a button on that device and it'll read it for you. We owe that to our children because the Bible telling us it's fulfilling. The scriptures is fulfilling and you either going to be on the part of the fulfillment where God blesses you with his joy, peace, prosperity, or you're going to be on that part where you're going to be always in sorrow. Do your part. So when they become old, if they drift away, the Bible say, at least you have showed them the way and they know how to return back. All of us have been on that road and we return back. And that's why we're thankful, children, hear us, that we made it back alive. Most of the adults, if they would tell the young people, we shouldn't be alive because we put ourselves in situations where we could have been dead. But only God's grace and the prayers of our parents and the church kept us. So, again, thank God for you all. And as we, Elder Johnson, come, Dear Lord God Almighty, we come before you 
into our very presence. Father, you know every heart, every up and every down. You know all about us from afar off. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you have found fit one more time to find us in a house of worship. And do to you, dear Lord, for all the praises and all the glory. For it is you, O Lord, it is you, O Lord, that has kept us from falling into the act of the enemies. They are so near to us today than ever, O Lord God. But you, O Lord, Father, say, just peace, be still. Speak peace unto our hearts, dear Lord God. Speak love unto our hearts, dear Lord God. Be joy unto our hearts, O Heavenly Father, according to your spirit. In all our doings, dear Lord Father, for you say the battle is not ours, but it belongs to you. And we give it over to you, O Heavenly Father, for all, dear Lord God, for the protection of your people. I just pray, dear Lord God, for your saints. I pray you, Lord God, for your fallen sinners. And I pray you, Lord Father, for the evil workers of evil doers, dear Lord God. Strengthen our hearts, strengthen their hearts, strengthen the minds of your people, dear Lord Father, for you let them know that you have called not one to perish, dear Lord Father, that all may be saved. You have so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that we will believe him and shall not perish, but have everlasting life, O Holy Father. Bless the people, dear Lord Father, and may cry out unto your name, dear Lord Father, that they too may be saved. Oh Lord, look here upon the heart of faith, dear Lord God. Look upon the pastor and his wife and his family, and each family that stand before me right now, Lord God. Continue to strengthen us in your word, dear Lord God. Continue to, to, to bless the pastor's spirit, dear Lord God, to bring us the fruit meat, dear Lord God, that we all shall remain, dear Lord God, under the protection, dear Lord God, on your, on your divine word, dear Lord God. Help today, Lord God, keep today, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Praise the Lord, y'all. How y'all know is the line of Judah? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Stand to your feet all over the building. Let's give God a mighty hand clap praise. Amen. 
Father, as we come into this hour, we thank you again that our minds are alert, our hearts have been fixed up on you and your word. Thy word is true, thy word is powerful, thy word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Now may your word empower us and inspire us, challenge us, and lead us into all righteousness and holiness. In Jesus' name, we thank you. And the church shout it. Amen. Amen. While you are standing, please open your Bibles to Proverbs 4. We will read verses 23 through 26. We want to pick up from the dis a discussion that we had up on Monday night when we were talking about the heart. Mm. When you have it, say I have it. Sounds like we're still waiting on a few. I want to point out several things in the scripture this morning. And hope that the word of God, you allow the spirit of God to examine our hearts. And in the word this morning, I want to point out that many of us, all of us, have had heart attacks. Our hearts is not as good as we think they are. Think they are, rather. And some of you may be having a heart attack this morning. It's just like they say, if you don't know the signs, until it come upon you. So I want to talk to you with this question. What does it mean <clears throat> to guard your heart? Because we often quote the scripture and we talk about guarding your heart. And most people, when they re refer to the, to the heart, not on a physical sense, but a spiritual sense, we always implies it on a physical sense because we often like to pat in our chest where the heart is over to your left and we often say our heart. When we talk about heartbroken, we always do here. But then you never experience any pain there. So we're gonna talk about that this morning. What does it mean to guard your heart? Now, Solomon writes, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now, if you're making notes or you're highlighting, you might want to highlight that part there. For out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips put forth from thee. Let thine eyes Look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Now, Father, it's in your power and your will, your Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. So Solomon is telling us that we need to be careful how you think because your thoughts make you the person that you are. Your thoughts. If you're a negative person, your thoughts make you negative. You're a messy person or a gossipy person, your thoughts make you the person that you are. You know, your thoughts. Never say anything that is not true. 
Look straight in front of you, he said, and watch where you're going because you must decide to do things carefully and whatever you do will be right. So when we ask the question, what do it mean to guard your heart? Your heart, other than the Holy Spirit, is the most precious thing that God gave you. Even in the physical body, your heart plays a great part. When you think about it, your heart has an intake valve and an output valve. It takes blood in on one side and then de delivers blood out on the other side. But in the life of the blood, it carries oxygen. And when your heart is messed up, it messes with your whole body. You can have blocked valves. And I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to say I'm an expert because I'm not a doctor. But I can say I know what it is to be on that side of a bad heart. I know the pain don't feel bad. The, don't feel good, rather. You know. Uh, what they would call a, uh, if I can remember the name, it's been so long since God healed me, um, cardiac arrest. Would a doctor say that one part of my heart was not pumping an equal flow? And that start causing, anytime something is wrong with the heart, it start causing pain. But we talking about the spiritual heart. What does it mean to guard your heart? The answer we just read you in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23 through 26. It instructs us as believers to above all else, he says, guard your heart. For everything, get this now, for everything you do flows from it. Now, we're not talking about the physical heart. Stay spiritual with me. Okay. It flows from it. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give thought. Get this now. Give careful thought to the path for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. So when Solomon refers to guarding the heart he really means the inner core of a person what is that inner core your thoughts everyone shout thoughts, thoughts. your feelings everyone shout your feelings, feelings. Desires. desires your will, will. and choice. choice that's what makes that person who he or she is it's your inner core. This is what Solomon said you need to protect. The heart. Your inner core thoughts. The inner core person. In Proverbs, and we'll probably mention again. In Proverbs he says that so a man thinketh, so is he. If you think broke, I, I, and I found this to be true. If you think broke, you're broke. Now you might say, well, Bishop, that's not true because I be thinking broke, but I still got money. But you live as a broke person. You always poor mouthing. How does a broke person poor mouth? You know, a $2.50 hamburger to you, oh, that costs too much. Somebody shout amen. Amen. And this is why they think people that eat steaks got all the money. No, we just think differently. You can buy a pack of steaks for about $11. It may not be as thick. Or well, you've been eating steak all your life and don't know. Every time you go and get a hamburger, that steak meat ain't nothing but beef. Steak is nothing but beef. So you got to understand the thoughts, the feelings, desires, and wills. It makes you who you are. 
Now the Bible tells us that our thoughts often dictate who we become. In Proverbs 23 and 7, he says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said, <coughs> excuse me, to he, but his heart is not with thee. His heart is not with thee. Look at Proverbs 27 and 18. He said, As in water face, answer it to face, so the heart of a man to man. So the mind of a man reflects who he really is. And not simply his actions or words. And this is why God examines the heart of a man. Not simply his outward appearance and what he appeared to be. In 1 Samuel 16 and 17, look what he writes. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. Or on the height of his statue because I have refused him see some of the things people look up on and think it look you know beauty or she's pretty she's fine or he's handsome and all that God may have reject them and that's probably why you having all these problems in relationship because you want God to accept something that he rejected because you like it y'all will get that one tomorrow for the Lord see it not as man see it. Amen. Amen. For man look it under outward appearance, but the Lord look it under heart. You know, that's what it's all about. The Lord look it on the heart. So God sees our heart. Regardless of how bad you may think about somebody, you need to rethink because what you think is not important to God. And it's only important to you because if you think a person is bad or you don't like them, the only thing you're going to do is shut down from talking to them or dealing with them. But it does not stop anything about them because what God has approved, your thoughts, I'm sorry to, to be the barrier of your bad news, is that whatever you may disapprove does not affect what God has approved. <laughs> I can show you in the scripture. If it was left up to the people, they called Moses a murderer. But see, God thought of him as a savior of his people. When they look at David, they call David a womanizer, adulteress, a murderer. But God looked up at him as a man after his own heart. So regardless of what people may think, you know, about you, it's the thoughts that God has. That's why you have to, you have to always guard your heart. You know? Because that's where everything flows from. All that anger and animosity and jealousy and, and, and rage, it comes from your heart. <laughs> I never understood when I would hear my grandmother and the old saints say, Lord, you know, cleans my, well, how is it? Sit right hearts, sit wrong hearts right and right hearts on fire. They was talking about our thoughts. And we do not endure persecution from the enemy. We endure it from each other. We are our biggest critics in the body of Christ. Because our heart is not right. So now I'm going to look at people when I see all of that. I just look at, man, they really need a doctor. They're having a heart attack. And don't even know it. You know. When you're angry, everybody shout when you're angry. angry. You're having a heart attack. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you need to stop that. You're having a heart attack. Look at somebody else and say, where does it hurt at? Because that's what Solomon said. He said, it flow, every issue flows. And if you don't watch it, you ought to be in panic mode. Think about the woman who had the issue of blood. <coughs> Life flowing from her. And only Jesus could handle her. Think about you. All of those issues that are flowing from you. It's like blood flowing from you. The Life is flowing from you. That's why, you know, now, now I don't know if any of you ever 
had a heart attack, or uh, I, I know what, you, you probably had the closest thing to it, a gas pain. Hit right up under that rib cage. And you think you're having a heart attack. Oh, I believe I'm having a heart attack. Until you release. Release. I'm glad she thought about that because you know me, I only know one way to put it the way it is. When you release. And then what do you say after you release? Woo, thank you, Jesus. But then you got to hear up and clear out the space. Because all of that that's built, now don't y'all y'all act like y'all don't, don't, you know, all of that that's the built up in you is hard to stay around it, huh, Regina? So think about your heart. When you go to relieve and all of that stuff, yes. it makes people just want to get away from you. Yes. All that anger, frustration, fussing, arguing, yelling, all of that is releasing. You got to protect the heart. Protect the heart. Everybody shout protect the heart. Protect the heart. So... Just as there are many diseases and disorders that can affect the physical heart, there are many elements of the spiritual heart that can impair growth and development as a believer. This is why most of us are still in the same rut that we're in, because we're not growing. Because we have a, a disease and disorder in our heart. You know, they say this, they say that most drug addicts, Whatever age that they really start doing heavy drugs at, now I don't know if this is true, but this is what they said, is that regardless of how old they get, their mind stopped growing right there. So their body may be 50, 60 years old, but their mind is still 17 or 18 because that's where they did their heaviest drugs at. It affected their heart. Most Christians are still stuck back to what somebody did to them is because they never got over it. So they are still stuck there. Disease and disorders. Their heart have been affected. So once the heart is affected, then there is no growth and development. Now, watch this. At the Ross, at the Ross, Courses, and I'm not saying that right, but it is the hardening of the arteries due to accumulated cholesterol plaques and scar scarring in the artery walls. That's what causes heart attacks. Hardening of the spiritual heart can also occur. When we are presented with God's truth, and we refuse to acknowledge it or accept it, it calls us to be hardened. That's why the Bible say, harden not your hearts. And that's where most of us at right now. Is that we are having these problems. Our hearts have been hardened because we sometimes blame God for everything. We blame everybody else except ourselves you know I can't blame no one because I have a, a gut can't blame nobody but myself you know can't say I'm stressed out or what have you you give me a candy bar and a 10 pound weight in one hand I'm happy <laughs> So you have to understand. So although Egypt was stricken with one calamity after another when Pharaoh refused to release the Israelites from their bondage, is because the Bible said that he hardened, God hardened his heart against the truth that God Almighty intended to deliver his people from Egypt. You know, in Exodus 7 and 22, and the musicians 
of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. And then Exodus 8 and 32 says, And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also, neither would he let the people go. And then Exodus 9 and 34, And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more and hardened his heart, he and his servants. So you see the state of the mind, the reason why we have to guard our hearts is because our life depends upon it. In Psalms 95 verses 7 through 8, for he is our God, David said, and we are the people of his pastor and the sheep of his hand today. If we will hear his voice, you know what David said? When you hear his voice today, not tomorrow, but if we hear his voice when? And what David said? Harden not your hearts. Harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. So we have to be careful because these are the conditions of our heart. So the same way that we go to the doctor for physical and they put you on a stress test, God has a way of putting us on a stress test. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. To see, and, and just as they put you on that stress test, they're not going to overwork you no more than what you can handle. God is not going to put no more on you than you can bear. Yeah. But he'll, let, he'll allow that stress test to see how, what the condition of your heart. What do you mean? Let, let me see. Maybe somebody, the children will get on your nerves <clears throat> to see how well you can handle it. And most of us don't handle it well. I know I don't. Because I, I got fire that I love so much, boy. And I tell you, they, they can put you in a, in, a, in, a, in a point where you think you're having a heart attack. And I know all you parents are like that. Amen? Amen. You always hollering. As soon as you hear a bump, what y'all doing out there? Or somebody crying, what happened? You know. And then you get hysterical, they get hysterical, you shouting and they shouting, you saying, why are you screaming? Well, you screaming. So God has a way of testing our stress, even in relationships. You get upset with each other. And you go, so this is why he say guard your heart. And, and let me tell you this here. Let me tell you this here. It makes no difference how good of a shape that you think you in. The man who hosted, uh, what is that? The, 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 the Biggest Loser? Is that the name of the show? The Biggest Loser? Where they exercise these people, they weigh in, and their goal is to get them to lose weight. You know, all that he, your parents, y'all don't watch that. He was in tip-top shape, eating right, exercising, and trying to get overweighted people to lose weight and become like him. But guess what? None of them had a heart attack. He did. So now his wife is taking over. He making commercials. So why did I say that? I want to point this to you. Regardless of how long you've been in Christ, how many scriptures you can read, how much you can speak in tongues, how much you can dance, how much you can do whatever you do that make you look like you saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to check your heart. <coughs> Somebody shout, show you right. My grandmother not here, but I'm going to teach y'all her words. So I just need y'all, I, I wish she was here. I just need y'all to say, show enough. That's when I know I was on it. When I hear my grandma shout, show enough. So we have to understand that. This is a serious thing. Like they say, here's a phrase they say, you are what you eat. So I guess you could say I'm a, I'm a cow, I'm a pig, I'm a chicken, 
I'm a crawfish, I'm a crab, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fish, I'm a shrimp. And then I'm just whatever is mixed in together. Yeah, I'm talking about the wieners now. And bologna. And press ham. Summer sausage. Ain't nothing like a good press ham sandwich fried in the skillet. Yeah. Mayonnaise and then press that joker together with a bag of sour cream chips making y'all hungry and a good cold soda. So think about it on the spiritual thing. He says you are what you think. What you allow to come in, that's what you are. It's not good for you. It's not healthy for you. Wasting a whole lot of time. Look, look. Wasting a whole, a whole day being mad and angry and fussing and fighting. And at the end of the day, you still didn't resolve it because the next day you still arguing about what was yesterday. I'm going to give you a good day. I'll give you a good day, Elder Ramsey. And if it ain't resolved, and I'm not going to give you my whole day because I do have shows I like to watch. So I'm going to give you a good few hours. And if it ain't resolved, then I'm done with it. Yeah. We're just calling a draw. I even let you think you won. And then tomorrow when you bring it over, I'm not dealing with it. I'm focused. Because I can't allow these issues to keep flowing out of my heart. So you got to know when to let up. Watch this here. Pastors need, I want to talk to the pastors. Come on, come on. Zoom in on me a little bit closer. Sound boot. Zoom in on me a little bit closer. Zoom in on me a little bit closer, but not too close because I need to talk to pastors right now. Listen, quit jeopardizing your life trying to micromanage what God didn't assign you to micromanage. Just tell the people the truth. Yeah, Pastors are having heart attacks because they are, I learned, if I didn't learn one thing, you can zoom back now. If I didn't learn one thing I learned was when I heard this old uh, preacher talk at a funeral. He said, I spent all of my life teaching people to keep your lives together, to meet God. He said, and now I'm old and I realize that I jeopardize my own life. So now I'm going to take the rest of this time I have on earth and get myself together. So I learned then that, hey, I'm going to tell you the truth, but guess what? I'm not going to be in my vehicle at night riding by your house trying to see what extra cars is there. I, even if I see somebody that look like you in a restaurant, I'll take a second look so I can make sure I speak to you because I don't want you coming back to church saying, Pastor saw me and ignored me. But if I can't recognize who you are, then I'm going on about my business. It's over with. I don't care who you was with, what you was doing, what you could have been there with some I don't care it ain't my business because if you die that's between you and God I live my life like they say what's that Vegas what goes on in Vegas I ain't never been to Vegas I don't want to go <laughs> Because <laughs> my flesh may get the best of me. They look around and say, well, what goes on in Vegas? Really? Oh, really? Somebody shout, that's old news. Because I see a whole lot of stuff on TV and social media in Vegas now. I guess when they get back here, Deke, they think they're still in Vegas. Cause they be all on social media. Now I ain't talking about nobody. Oh, Tiff, I ain't talking about you, Tiffany. Cause you didn't go to Vegas, right? Oh, you did. Oh, Lord, you know I'm not talking about you. Jesus, I'm just talking. I ain't talking about you. Yeah. You know, 
It's a bad way for a man to hear about his wife got killed and have to look at social media or TV to see that she left with a man in a club and was all hugged up. So what goes on in Vegas don't stay in Vegas no more. You might want to try Japan. <laughs> Somebody say, come on, Bishop. Okay, so David, King David pleaded, and I'm almost done, with his people not to harden their hearts in rebellion against God as they did in the wilderness. And that's what I'm basically telling you all is don't harden your hearts with God. Because let me tell you something. If God ever dealt with your heart, that's why I tell people, we, we, we so adamant about, I got to keep my life together. I got to stand before, I got to stand before God. So I got to make sure of this. But we forget about that inner heart, the core of man. Are you still holding anger and animosity? Let me tell you what. Any situation in life that you can walk away from and still be alive, you ought to be happy. Yeah. And, and watch this here. If, 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 uh, let me see. If Stanley slapped me or punched me in the mouth and I walk away, it doesn't mean that he beat me. It's just, I just decided not, I didn't want to fight that day. Somebody say, yeah, but Pastor, you might have shot and Deacon Stanley's this. Yeah, but guess what? He can't stop it if I bum rush him. All I need to do, Omar, is just get a hand on him, and I'll let the ivory do the rest. <laughs> now, I'm just joking. I learned that from a brother. And then one he couldn't beat, boy, he latched into him and bite him, and they freeze. He did the Mike Tyson. He, ah, I can't, you know. Wives, don't go biting your husbands. So we have to understand that, y'all. That was just an icebreaker to make you laugh. So there are many things that can harden the heart and lead a person to deny God, just like cholesterol blocks the blood flow. They keep a believer from having a free flow of God's peace and blessings derived from obedience. Guarding a rebellious spirit and cultivating a spirit of submissive obedience to God's word, therefore, is the first step in guarding our heart. Heart murmurs or abnormal flows, patterns due to faulty heart valves. Heart valves act as doors to prevent backward flow of blood into the heart. Spiritual heart murmurs occur when believers engage in complaining, gossiping, disputes, and contention. Believers are instructed many times to avoid grumbling, murmuring, and complaining. In Exodus 16 and 3, the writer says, And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full, for ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Complaints. John 6 and 43, Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, murmur not against yourselves. Philippians 2 and 14, do all things without murmuring and disputing or complaining. Amen. Amen. So by engaging in these activities, believers shift their focus away from the plans, purpose, and past blessings of God to what? To the things of the world. And God sees this as a lack of faith. Yes. Amen. Can I get amen? amen. And without faith. Yeah. It is impossible, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, it is impossible to please God. Instead, as Christians are instructed to strive for contentment in all things, yeah. trusting in God to provide what is needed in his good time. Yeah. Not your time. Because yeah. God is waiting on you. And in his good time, it'll be done. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave you, never forsake you. And my grandma used to always say, shut up and quit complaining. If you just have a piece of bread and a glass of water, you ought to thank the Lord. Amen. 
Some of y'all don't remember her saying that. But she often testified that among the believers. It's always about thanking the Lord for what you have, not complaining about what you don't have. When you get off into complaining about what you don't have, you're having a spiritual heart attack. Because it's causing you frustration. You know, heavy, you know, I tell people in a minute, this is my couch. It may not look as good as yours. It is old, but it's my couch. When children come to visit, I, no, 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 no. Don't stand, what, do, no, 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 you do that at home. This is my, get off my couch. Like They be all on the top. Walking on like a tightrope, you know. You have to do like the old folks say. This is mine. I paid for it. So you have to understand that, amen? So guarding against a complaining spirit and cultivating a spirit of gratitude and trust is the second step towards guarding the heart. Congestive heart failure is an ability of the heart to successfully pump blood through the body due to weakness within its walls. Congestive heart failure can result in hypertension, high blood pressure, you know. Microcardial infraction, heart attacks, an abnormal enlargement of the heart. So the spiritual equivalent are anger, everybody shout anger. Giving into temptation and pride. and pride. Touch your neighbor's hand. You know how you check their blood pressure like the doctors do. No, holy. You know how they. You know how you go to the doctor enough. You know. Then look at your watch. Now tell them you need to calm down. Heart beating too fast. Those are things we need to understand. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 31 and 32 said, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You got to get rid of that. Because he instructs us to get rid of all bitterness. Rage. Everybody shout rage. rage. And anger. Rage. Brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave us. Give them a hand for that. So we need our hearts checked. I mean, we look, look at three people and say, you're in bad shape. You look good, but inwardly you're in bad shape. You ever been happy watching your favorite movie and all of a sudden it give you a thought of somebody that you really don't like. And then you find yourself, you find yourself, y'all talking about I'm crazy, I'm going to how crazy y'all are. You find yourself arguing with your TV. Shut up, I knew she did it. I knew she did it. Now don't let your children tell off on y'all. Because they'll show y'all in bad shape. You, you sitting there watching a movie. It's just a movie. We all have been there. I would have been there too. And then all of a sudden you find yourself doing this. <laughs> you go to all of that and wiping your eyes. You know, we let things get to us. We need our heart. Look, we got, we got, look, we, we, we got some plaque in our arteries. Because we let every little thing get to us. So you need to be careful. Somebody say, I need a checkup. And man, I hate it when they put me on that treadmill. I got to go Monday and I hope they don't do that. Hate when they put you on that treadmill. Man, you already see I'm out of shape. Worst thing you want to do is hook all these gadgets up on me and they want me to get on a treadmill and then you go to walking and they incline it and they start off slow and they say, okay, we're going we're gonna to speed it up just a little bit more. And then by that time you say, okay, come on with it. I'm ready for it. You know, you study walking cool on the treadmill. We're going to speed it up a little bit more. Okay, come on. Then all of a sudden you find yourself walking like this here. Y'all ever been there? You been there before? <laughs> 
in the last 10 seconds you saying Jesus just don't let me faint then hurry up somebody shout you need to check up every Christian is locked in a constant intense war with demonic forces every last one of us and many of us become so intent on fighting the external that's the outward spiritual war that we forget that much of our battle is not external forces but within our own mind and thoughts Paul say there's a war going on that's why I say after a few hours I'm done with it I'm let it go why it's because you trying to get me to help you do a fight that you're having on the inside and you need to battle that yourself if you hadn't have been messing with them they wouldn't have been messing with you you know Tell somebody, think, think. Before, you run your mouth. before you run your mouth. You know, you got to make sure you okay. Because you get to messing around with demonic stuff, and you get yourself caught up in a, in a spiritual warfare, a fight, you have a fight on your hands. You have a fight on your hands. Because Paul said it's on the inside. And it, in other words, you know when you shadow box, you think you're doing something. Now you ain't hitting nothing, but you make your own sounds. And you're looking good. Shadow boxing. Wasting time. We fighting with demonic spirits and don't know how to fight. You ain't been whooped until you've been whooped by a demonic spirit. Because most of us just want to give somebody a good whooping, but demonic spirits is out to kill you. James 1, 4 through 16, I'm not going to read it all, but he said, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect in entire uh, wanting nothing if any of you lack wisdom let him ask God that give it to all men liberally and unbraid it not and it shall be given him but let him ask in faith not wavering for he that waver is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord a double mind man is unstable in all his ways now you read the rest that's why I don't fool with a lot of people because too many people is double minded yeah. unstable yeah. Amen? amen so each person James says is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed and you know what, 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 what what's pitiful is that when you blame somebody or everybody for your own decisions you see it every day Oh, you know what? I'm in prison now because my daddy wasn't at home. My mama raised me. I was raised by a single mother. I ain't never been to jail or prison. Well, I've been to jail one time for holding. Just until I could pay the ticket and I got out. So that didn't go against my record. But they blame everything. Drug addicts blame everything. Men sleeping with men blame it because somebody molested them. Women with women because somebody molested them or raped them. No, that is no excuse. That's the lie of the devil. Mm. That's, that's a desire. That's something that they, I don't even want to get off into that. Let me move on. Cause I'm ready to go home because my wife gonna fry me some chicken today <laughs> ain't nothing like a good preaching and some good old fried chicken can I get an amen? amen so listen don't be deceived he said my brothers and sisters sin always begin in the mind a sinner must first conceive and dwell under sinful action before he actually carries it out. That's why you got to check the condition of your heart. And the first line of defense, therefore, must be to refuse to even contemplate 
a wrongful action. Now the apostle Paul tells us to take every thought captive so that it conforms to the will of God. That's 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. You have to take it all into captive. Proverbs 16 and 18 tells us that pride leads to destruction. Proverbs 16 and 5 says, Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Pride was the first great sin of Satan when he thought that he could be like God and entice one third of the angels to attempt a coup in heaven. Now when you look at what, what, what he also tempted Eve in Genesis, she wanted to become greater than God. Because he said, if you eat of this, then God know you become like him. So he tempted her to try what he tried. She wanted to be equal or greater than God. Everybody shout pride. pride. Ezekiel 28 and 17, I'm coming home. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. You know what? Those are some of the most arrogant people I've met on earth. People that think they look good. It's all right to know you look all right, but your pride. You ever seen people when they sit on side of you, they sit down and they move over like, like you know, you look like, what's wrong with me? Yeah. Thou hast corrupt thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings and they may behold thee. For this reason, Satan was cast from heaven. And Satan also tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden by appealing to her ego. He said, for God knows that when, and, and watch this here. Watch this, uh, look, look here, look here. Spirit just dropped this in my mind. Why every woman want to be like the Kardashians? No, no, I'm not talking about women in the world. I'm talking about Christian women. I, I can't stand, look, I can't. When you're taking a picture, women, listen, and y'all that are watching. The object of taking a photograph is they want to photograph your facial features. Where the most intelligent part of you is located. Here. But we see so many. <clears throat> the, yeah, y'all know what I'm finna say, right? I mean, Elder Ramsey, I, I, I'll, I'll talk to you. You just want a simple photograph, but I get Christian women. <laughs> Is that the most intelligent thing that you have? If it is, you are messed up. I'm telling y'all, we, we have a sad world. The church want to be like the world. And because of that, the world say, we don't want to be a part of the church. Why? It's because we don't see the church. Who do they see? They see just a bunch of them coming pretending. I'm telling y'all. Told my wife this morning, I said, man, I thought spring forth, you know, we're heading towards spring now, but why we see all these leaves? She said, well, the Bible told us, God told you. You won't be able to tell the winter from the summer. And I'm quite sure God is not going to have a judgment panel up there watching to see if you have a body like the Kardashians. Because the, I can tell you right now, them, Nicki Man, Man, what is her name? Man, Minaj, is that, I said it right? All of them, what you see is fake. Just like the Bible say, what you see now, it wasn't then, God created that. And if you watch the world, they're fighting against each other. 
Oh yeah, I, I, I watch the news, her and Cardi B fighting, just disgracing themselves. But that's what the world does. But it's a shame when it flows over into the church. Y'all need a checkup. It's just a hard checkup for all of us. Somebody shout, check me out, Holy Spirit. I know some of y'all said, oh God, why did I come to church this morning? That's okay, while you're here, I'm going to help you out. Just take this prescription. You know? So the thing of it is, and I'm going to leave you alone. Satan, when he tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden, he was appealing to ego. He said, for God knows that when you eat from the forbidden tree, your eyes will be open. And you will be like God knowing good and evil and Eve desired to be as wise as God yeah so she captivated to Satan's advice to eat of the fruit of the the fruit of the tree pride was therefore the downfall of man as well Satan did not want man to obey God but to become his own God Determining for himself reality, meaning, and ethics, and the satanic philosophy is the foundational philosophy of sorcery, secular humanism, and new age mythicism. And that's what we look for. We try to find everything to discredit the word of God. How do we know it's really the word of God? Why we know uh, the white man didn't write that and gave us his religion? Well, I'm going to answer that real quick because I tested that theory. And there's no way in the world the white man some 2,000 years ago would even know that there would be earthquakes in dire places. But God did. There's no way possible that over 2,000 years ago that the white man would know that you wouldn't be able to tell the seasons like they are now, but God knew. Yeah. Am I making sense? Yeah. See, 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 the white man didn't know 2,000 years ago that fathers would be killing sons and sons, fathers and mothers and daughters and all this, but God already spoke it. Right. See? So I test that theory that they wasn't that bright back then to know what's going to happen 2,000 years. But the Bible did declare that God know every thought of a man. He know what you're going to say, what you're going to do, and what's going to be before it even happened. So I tested that theory. Because I wanted to see, was he just that bright? And man still trying to figure out. See, over 2,000 years ago, man didn't know nothing about the seas, but it's in reality right now, and I can't tell you where I've seen it on, on YouTube, where you have two seas, I don't know what's the name of them, they, they, watch this here, they come together, but they'll never mix across. Y'all remember seeing, anybody saw that? Bodies of water. You can cross over from one to another, but the waters will never mix. That's a mystery, only God. Yes. Scientists have been trying to figure it out. So guess what? Why Satan got, 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 and I'm going to speak not, if you hear, I'm speaking to you too, and anyone that's watching. You that's against the word of God and think that you know God and think that it's just a theory, then guess what? Even the scientists have left you in your dumb thought of mind and they going back trying to find the tomb, they trying to dig a grave with archaeologists and everything. Now the scientists are saying, guess what? No, we're not going to say there is a higher power. We're going to say it like it is. God does exist. Amen. They even hired Morgan Freeman now to travel the world to talk to Christians and everybody who proclaim God. He's trying to find out. So it is real. They're trying to study the heart of man, not here, but the heart of man to find out what makes that connection between them and God. Yeah. 
They can't find it. Because the Bible say that he is unsearchable. So I'm convinced that God is God. And God is real. See? Have no doubt in my mind. The songwriters say, you can't make me doubt him. Because I know all about him. In my heart. So you got to understand who God is. If your heart, that's why I understand now when the saints say that my, my, my mind is alert and my heart is fixed. Why? It's because my heart is fixed on God is God. And God said, if there be any other God besides me, I don't know him. God ain't trying to figure out what's going to happen 2,000 years from that point of creation. He already spoke it, but now man is trying to figure out what happened 2,000 years ago that brought us to this point. Yeah. Tell somebody you better get your heart right. See, it, 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 see, see, watch this here. It's just like a heart attack. You don't know when it's coming. And each time it gives you warning. High blood pressure, heartaches and pain. My mama them had me thinking I had gas. 17 years old. So they all just gas. And I have to stop playing basketball and get my oldest brother to hit me in the chest with the palm of his hand like four, five times. I didn't know then because I was dumb to the fact that what he was doing was he was doing CPR or he was just giving me compressions on the heart because the pain went until I decided to go get a checkup. Nah, that's why I want to pause that. Y'all that's having those problems up in here, that's your heart. You need to get a checkup. You think everybody against you? No, you need a checkup. Your heart is giving you signs that something is wrong. If you are, if you are angry more than you are happy, that's a warning sign that you're about to have a heart attack. Can I get a witness somewhere? So these are the things that you have to understand who God is and what God is. It's time to get your hearts fixed. Before you have a heart attack. Many pastors have lost their lives. Took their lives. Because they didn't get their heart right. They wanted to please everybody. And not take care of themselves. Stand to your feet all over the building. It's time. I'm serious, saints. The Spirit of the Lord say it is time. You've been, you've, been, you've been ripping and running. Like you've been ripping and running. It's time to get your life together. Because you look good on the outside. Mm-mm. Look at your neighbor and say, I look good, but I have a lot of issues. Yeah, we, have, we all have a lot of issues. That's why I tell people you need to let the Lord examine before you marry. Let the Lord examine your husband and your wife so you'll know how to deal with those issues. you know how to take care of them. See, you know how to deal with it. You know how to give them their medication. Because there's nothing worse than a person dying at your hands. And a lot of people are dead. Spiritually dead. Because they had a heart attack. And the pain was there. And nobody took heed to it. Father, we, we thank you. As your people 
that desire to come to the altar, God, as they come to the altar. We pray that your spirit 